The push in recent economy over the decades, over the last particular decades, has recently increased the wealth of a large number of individuals across the globe. Despite the large economic output the world has given, we still see that our current social, political, and economic inequalities are rather increasing, but not decreasing. The global financial crisis of 2007-2008 revealed significant weaknesses that we have in our financial systems. The vulnerabilities that we are still getting impacted with our financial crisis or the weaknesses in our financial system is still impacting our global economy and our interconnected world. Over these years, the one decade has almost been passed from the last financial crisis, and the world is still struggling with overcoming to the growth rate of economy that we had before. The monetary policies in the major economies are still seeing much unconventional, which is much biased towards the riches, and again increasing towards the inequalities in the world. Now, is the time when we require a resilient system which can overcome to all these transactions, to overcome to all these systems which are leading to, which are liable to be broken down. So, so, so basically, what are the reasons and why our economic systems has been failing? So if we see, the trust was the most important factor. The trust was the factor with which the world has started, the civilization has all started. So, so this is like a cuneiform tablet from 5,000 years ago. This was the time when the civilization has been just starting up. There were need to make trust on each other. There were informations needed to be passed across generation. And this was the way they used to write their law, to write their history, and record anything which they want to have and pass to the system. Then the world grew up. Now we are in a more of a civilized way where the trade, finances, and other system started to grow up. And then with the financial system being becoming more bigger, we required accounting systems. This was the first single entry bookkeeping financial system we saw in around 13th century, which was targeting to how the entire transaction ledger should be maintained. The financial system from the 13th century to the 21st century has grown exponentially. Um, it's it's uh, like I would say that easily the million times the economy has grown up. Around here we see in the double entry bookkeeping, so double entry bookkeeping come up as a replacement of single entry bookkeeping when the banks and the financial institutions, the intermediaries started setting up. Because now there are globalization, in, there are not just civilization, there are now globalization. So there are, we require intermediaries across the world for you who can bet on behalf of you, for traders, for buyers, for sellers. And this was what a double entry bookkeeping system started in. So most of the mathematicians here, you know that what a double entry bookkeeping is, that for any credit, you must have a debit. If you have bought something, that means some money has went into building that thing. If you have passed, borrowed your friend 1,000 bucks, that means someone has debited and someone has credited the account. This was the double entry bookkeeping. And this is the system which regulation is started to capture for our financial system. However, and this is the system which we are still working on in the 21st century. So, so basically, when the financial crisis happened, a lot of things break down. We still see the impact of it. But who do we blame for it? When the financial crisis happened, this financial crisis has led by the crisis of trust as well. 
Now this crisis of trust is not going to go away by its own. Regulations are now tighter more than ever before. They are doing their best that they can leverage. They can leverage the most advanced technology, they can leverage the best available options so that they can make feel that their people, economies are secure. But still, the governments, the regulations are not able to bring up or not able to take up with the progress because of the inbuilt system we have, because of the inbuilt weaknesses we already have present in the system. Our present system in the double entry bookkeeping is really old, centralized. Whatever is centralized is liable to get hacked, liable to get compromised, liable to get vulnerable. So we actually needed to think of a way that how we can pass this system and we can bring up with something which can again establish trust in our economy. Because we are now here. It's not the 500 years back when we are there. So, so this is Professor Yuzi Izari, a mathematics professor who has kept a concept in 1980s for the triple entry bookkeeping. What a triple entry bookkeeping is a more advanced version of a double entry bookkeeping where you just don't maintain the debit and credit, where only your two financial institutions, your two financial intermediaries are keeping the track of it, but actually what you are doing is creating a global distributed system where you are keeping the reports at multiple places, so the two guys where you are lying upon cannot fail you. This was the idea. And with this simple concept, the Bitcoin in 2009 appeared. The underpinning the Bitcoin was a technology we called blockchain. Now blockchain is something tricky to understand. I will make a try. So take an example of a book, uh, a simple book, a magical book you can understand for the reference. This magical book is, the, what the magic about it is that you can make a copy of this book and keep with yourself. Anyone in the world can make a copy of this book and keep it for free. Now, the most magical part, anyone who writes any line of text in this book is going to be copied, is going to appear automatically in every copy of this world. So basically, I have the copy, I written a line of text, this is going to be in the book automatically written to anyone who has this copy. Now, assume this line of text can be a financial transaction. This line of text can be a financial transaction where it's making this book as a database, as a financial ledger, where you can write that I am debiting my account for 500 bucks and crediting someone for that. Now, this book is acting as a financial transaction laser, is ever growing, recording all the transaction in the past which has happened, all the transaction which are ongoing. Now, this book also has the inherent capability that it automatically rejects any line of text which is not authorized or which is wrong. So basically, if there is any insufficient fund, if there is wrong authorization of the person who wants to make a write in the book, the line will not appear in the system. However, if the line is written, if the text of line is written in the book, this is going to be permanently enabled and will be permanently present in the book. This is what you can say the blockchain is in a nutshell. So blockchain is a global distributed ledger. It's a book, it's a spreadsheet, which is with millions, thousands of people present. Everyone is turning out to their own copy. What makes this database so beautiful? This database cannot be destroyed. Let's say that even, even the original author of the book has destroyed his version of the book this book cannot be destroyed until you destroy all the books which are present, all the copies of that book. And this is what makes make blockchain. It's completely secure 
than the any other versions we have. Now, with the blockchain, the current application, the, the first application in 2009 we saw was the Bitcoin, just after the financial crisis. Now, if you don't trust this, if you don't trust this uh, blockchain can do this magic, just know that right now over 700 trillion dollars worth of value is actually being transferred over blockchain through all the, com all the cryptocurrencies combined. So basically if to crack this magic, anyone who doesn't believe in magic can crack this magic and take away 700 trillion dollars home. This is the bounty we have for the blockchain. Now, of course, this is not magic. This is all cryptography. This is all mathematics. On, a, on an open, transparent algorithms, which we have present, which anyone can audit to, anyone can refer to, and see that why blockchain is making everything so secure, and we have such a breakless system as of now. Now, the blockchain doesn't necessarily have to only be limited to the bitcoins or the financial services. The, the blockchain has provided us a power that how we can reduce the inequalities as well in the system. As I said, the recent economy you have seen, all the world, they are more targeted towards the riches. Nothing is being done for more of the poor economy people. So this is what we have built this company two years back. And uh, what we are targeting to is that how people, how we can build or bring up the economy in such a way that this inequality gap can be decreased. The first thing which we did was regarding the insurance. So we all have insurance. We, in fact, we all get bothered by these insurance agents to buy health insurance, to buy life insurance, and to buy car insurances. Maybe, you know, if my car gets stolen, I can still live with it. Now think of an example. Think of about a daily wage laborers. These are the people who live on the basis of their daily earnings. The daily works which they do, the, on the basis of the daily works which they do, they eat and they have their two times meal. If by any reason this daily wage is compromised by, due to their health issue, due to accident, due to their unemployment, it's a catastrophic disaster for them. And actually, there is no product in the market for these people. There is no product at all. So when we go deeper and see why, why it says that I can buy a health insurance for myself, I can buy a car insurance, I can buy whatever insurance I want today, but these guys can't. The reasons is that the, these multinational corporations, the multinational companies believe is that with their current process, with their current operational process, because they are still relying upon a system where they do not trust, for everything they need proof. And for the same reason, their operational cost of maintaining such product goes much higher. Goes much higher than the revenue they can generate through this product. Now, with the blockchain, with blockchain, we created a community, a trustless society of daily wage laborers. And these trustless society can enroll, they can pay their premium, they can settle their claims, everything in the society itself. We don't have an inspectors to claim. We just need the rights of votes among the people, among the community itself, to make this entire process go smooth. So this is what blockchain provides. It's kind of help you build a trustless system. It kind of helps build regulations on board. It kind of helps you to build an entire economy where you don't need to have intermediaries who will think about their own profit. Here you can build economy which is better for the society, which is better for the community. So we, uh, of course, the insurances and the financial institutions are much trickier world today, acquiring licenses to everything. And uh, this is what we've done. We kind of partnered with some of the biggest insurance companies in the world. And uh, we partnered with some of the biggest insurance companies in the world, in the India, 
and rolled out this program so that they can, the, 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 what you say is the lowest economy of the people you get in India can avail the benefits of the most advanced economy. Thank you so much. <laughs>